Hey, what up, guys? It's Julie Van Swigger, and who we got on the show today? Y'all got Wes and Desir tapping in. How y'all feeling? Feeling amazing. Uh, How you feeling? <laughs> How's Atlanta, by the way? I'm good. Atlanta is Atlanta's tripping right now. We in the red zone on uh, COVID. <laughs> you saying everybody's still in restaurants, just vibing like nothing's going on. <laughs> I mean, we got our mask on, but yeah, they tripping mask out. Mask off. Fucking <laughs> 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 Y'all here while and I saw the um, yeah. like the strip club or something something that Atlanta did like when they were first able to uh, open up with the pool and stuff like that. I was like, whoa! No wonder why it's going crazy down there. That's scary. I, I was <laughs> never going to a strip club. I ain't never been to a strip club actually. Not that. I feel like that's what Atlanta has like one of their yeah. most popular features. Besides, yeah, I, I just for some reason ain't never been to a strip club. I guess I'm not that type. I mean, I'm going to go soon, but not anytime soon. You know what I'm saying? All right. So when it's COVID you know, that tight. Because one thing that I've realized about your music is though you're from Atlanta, you don't follow the trends of Atlanta. Like the vibes that you kind of give me are more, um, I don't know if you've been compared to him and I don't know if you like to be compared, uh-huh. but uh, Chance the Rapper. You give me Chance the Rapper vibes. Really? Right? Yeah, just that's, a little bit. That's one of the first. Yeah, just a smidget, but it's it's yeah. it's good because obviously he's a good rapper. Uh-huh. He's really nominated, you know, he's uh-huh. got great content. He he delivers. He he's just more than that. But yes. that's what I'm expecting from you as well. You said what? That's what I'm expecting from you as well to be yeah, more than course. the rapper. So let's yeah, get into I'm, when you I'm started rapping. Huh? Let's get into when you started rapping. Oh, I started when I was uh, I'm gonna say probably like 14. Oh, damn. Let me see. Um, there was a time where I didn't do it because I was like, bro, everybody rapping. I'm in Atlanta, like, right. especially Atlanta, like everybody want to be a rapper. So I was like, no, I'm not going to be a rapper. You know, I was, I was a little hipster when I was young, so mm. I wasn't trying to do that. Eventually, it was like, why not? Because my brother had a studio. My mm. friend knew how to engineer. I already wrote music. My boy was like, yo, just get on the mic, rap, I rap. Damn, and, and you're I good. My at first it. song, fifteen. Yeah. I, wow. Man, everybody says it. So <laughs> you're good enough to be on RCA, which is a legendary record label. So that's that should tell that's, you stuff right there. Uh, that's <laughs> crazy because I don't, I don't got no clout. No, no, but clout. you know, it's, it's definitely coming because you don't follow the trends, and it's not like your music is gonna melt away in about a couple months because what we have in the last five years, unfortunately, is trendy music, and the yes. trends go away. So mm-hmm. your music doesn't fit that mold, which means it's going to stay some stay a lot further than what we have right now. It'll be something that you play in five, ten years from mm-hmm. now. And you're gonna just That's like, the right, goal. Church. Timeless <laughs> music. I always listen back to old songs and just, I don't know, I feel that feeling. It's like pieces of nostalgia still attached to it. And mm. I don't know. I just feel like a kid again. So, yeah. Oh. So since you said that, because Apollo Archives just came out a couple of weeks ago, uh-huh. actually you do have a little bit of a like a groovy sort of sound to it. I, I don't know how else to explain it, but it has like a little bit of like groovy elements. It gives me a little bit of like 70s a little bit, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. But, but there's like a groove. <laughs> it's like a nice groove. I was like, All right, I could dig this right here. So let's talk <laughs> about the creative process uh, with Apollo Archives. Uh-huh. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of the uh, beats I picked were off of YouTube, actually. Mm, wow. But, yeah, a lot of the beats were off YouTube. Like, I'm not gonna tell you what type of beats I was looking <laughs> up, but I'm saying it's it's different type beats, and then I, I'll just like throw songs on them. Some of the songs I'll just like make a whole song, and then I'll, I'll go find another type beat and throw that on there. But yeah, nah. Um, a lot of them are YouTube type beats, actually. Shout out to YouTube producers. <laughs> Shout out yeah, to they, you. they holding it down. Like, I wouldn't be able to do anything if it wasn't for them. Matter of fact, I probably would have produced or something. I wish I knew how to produce, to be honest. But, Damn. Okay, so that's different. Because I'm thinking you, like, sat down with somebody and you guys went over. No, nah, like, it's, it's some of them that we did. Okay, dope, dope, dope. Yeah. And it's a nine-track uh, project, right? Yes. Perfect. Nine perfect. tracks. Might, might do a deluxe, you know what I'm saying? It depends on how I'm feeling. Everybody doing deluxes. Why not do a deluxe? Absolutely. So add something extra in there for your fans if they haven't heard mm-hmm. anything before. So is this your first actual project that you released? Uh, to DSPs, yes. Um, I got an old project. It's, it's archived right now. So not, that's funny. Um, it's, it's actually archived. Like, it's on SoundCloud. It's like 
probably like 18 songs. Wow. Just private. I'm going I'm to I'm post it one day again, just for the people that I was like really fucking with that. Because it's, it's some people that hit me up like, yo, where that, where that, um, that one tape you dropped that, where is that? And then I'll just send them like a private link. Just to <laughs> Yeah, because I was looking, I'm like, wait, there's only one project I see right now that's on. <laughs> and I'm like, is this his first, like, actual full project? But I'm glad you clarified that. Yes, nah, I just wanted to start start fresh, you know. Mm. So what made you want to start fresh? Um, being human, constantly evolving, like, always wanting to, always wanting to shift where, I, where I'm going. I don't know. Mm. Like, I'm still, I'm still finding myself as an artist. I'm only 22. Um, right. Yeah, I just want to start fresh. Absolutely. So I know that anime and Greek mythology has obviously um, influenced your music. So what yes. and what elements of that has transformed you and made you evolved as an artist? Um, I think I think I pull like the uh, the morals from like a lot of Greek mythology. Like there's there's always like this character that's the, the main character in the epics. Usually they'll be like this hubris hero. No, no. It'll be kind of like super arrogant in the beginning of the uh, plot. And okay. Then throughout it, yeah, it'll, it'll kind of become humble. So, mm. like, I don't know. I just resonated with that because it's like, I'm saying, I, I had main character syndrome growing up mm. for some mm. reason, but, like, <laughs> I mean, it, it disappeared. I'm, I'm more of an empathetic person now for some reason, just from I observing. <laughs> But yeah, nah, it's, it's just things in, in those uh, otherworldly genres of, of film, TV shows and whatnot that just like, I don't know, it, I, it's, it's larger than life. So mm. that's that's what I wanted to tap in with this project and see if I can exist within the rap world while I'm doing that without it sounding like, I don't know, too gimmicky or anything. I just wanted it to sound natural and mm. experiment with different stuff. But yeah. Definitely. So why color outside the lines being that you're from Atlanta? Why not stick to what everybody else is doing? Like even the Migos and Future, because obviously their career is mm-hmm. longstanding. But why color outside of those lines when you have such um, a huge influence around you? I really can't tell you. I just I don't know. I've never been comfortable with just like mm. settling for settling on doing what everybody else is doing. I mean, it's not a bad thing. Like, Future and Future is distinct. Uh, Migos is distinct. They're all distinct right. in their own ways. Um, especially Future. I love Future. Like, mm. you probably, you'll, you'll probably hear a little bit of Future in my music because I listen to a lot of that. Um, I don't know. I, I've just been, like, like I said, I was a hipster at one point. Like, I don't know. Now, I can't speak <laughs> hipster in your music, though, for sure. Because now that you said that, I'm like, yo, I can actually correlate that, too. Because, like I said, it's different. It's longstanding. It's not with the trends right now. Mm-hmm. So, when you were sitting down writing, because you have like a lot of, um, ser- not serious, but like it's not ignorant. <laughs> That's if I could say that. It's not ignorant <laughs> subject. So when you're sitting down writing, what makes you actually get into, all right, let me sit down and talk about this or talk about this subject rather than saying, I got five chains, I got two chains, I got 15 chains or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to say, I think the songs write themselves, to be honest. Like, I, I'll listen to this music. Like, I'll listen to a beat or something. And then I'll just, I'll just, like, think of the first thing I'll say. Think it, write down the first thing I, that comes to mind. And, like, everything just kind of, like, writes it, its own path. So, mm. yeah, I mean, it, it's more natural that way. It, it just flows out way, way more organically. So, yeah, that's that's probably what I do. Um, there's There's probably certain times where I'm, like, it just makes sense to say, I don't know. What's on your heart? <laughs> yes, what's on my heart, yes. I feel it, I feel it. <laughs> so who is a big music, like a big mu- musical influence for you? Like you said, you like Future. Like who outside of that and outside of anime and Greek mythology have influenced you greatly? Um, I'm going to say yay, Kanye. Mm. Um, Kanye, he, he's so controversial right now. I feel like you say Kanye right now, it's like you're gonna get in so much hot water. Ain't nobody got touch <laughs> Kanye, me. You know I'm saying I fuck with Ye. <laughs> I understand a lot of the things he does and why he does it. So I'm like, but yeah, uh, let me think. I got a lot. Like it, it just depends on what area you caught me in. Like I had a crazy Tyler phase. I had a crazy The Weekend phase. I had a mm-hmm. um, let me see. It just depends. I don't know. 
<laughs> so for your future projects, what do we expect mm-hmm. to hear from you outside of uh, this good eclectic sound that you have? Like, what are you looking to experiment with next? I'm probably going to uh, work on more storytelling. Mm-hmm. It, it'll probably be more, um, more down to earth. I'm, I'm still going to incorporate things of like otherworldly nonsense that I'm putting on music. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, um, probably a lot of storytelling. Um, I'm going to practice with like song structuring. Cause that's, mm-hmm. that's, for some reason, that's became really important to me. It just, I don't know, a lot of the songs I used to listen to were like so perfectly structured. Like, um, let me see. Uh, a lot of stuff for the ladies. Shout out to my lady. Okay. Vicky. I'm saying they, they like, like, yo, I love your music. Uh huh. They, they like, I love your music. They like, when you gonna write a song for me? I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm saying, might, might just drop an R&B project. <laughs> Who knows? Depends and on how. Take a little bit on Apollo, Apollo Archives, by the way. You got a little bit of a melody in there too, so I like to see. Yes. I like to see what you could do there. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm practice with it. I'm gonna see what I could do. <laughs> You're gonna get them Drake notes. You're gonna get that uh the Drake vocals together. <laughs> oh cap. <man. laughs> I'm gonna get singing lessons and tap in for really my exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So if you could pick somebody to be featured on your next project or your next uh single, who would it be? <sighs> Hard question. Um oh my god. Speaking of R and B, I've been listening to a lot of that recently. Um, mm-hmm. I probably, I probably would get like Lucky Day or something. Okay, he's <laughs> definitely, he's definitely he's it. He's fired. Yeah. yeah, he's fired. Um, give you on uh, Brent. Brent. Brent is hard. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, on all of them, just like definitely released some stuff where they were featured on a lot of other people's work within the last month, I feel like, too. Like, they're starting to really pick up traction. Yeah. Like mainstream traction. Mm-hmm. I gotta start doing features too. I'm 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 really not used to doing features, but I'm saying I'm I'm in a phase where I'm like ready to work with other artists because I've been making music by, by myself my whole life. Like I've just been in my little home studio, just like mm. thinking of new ideas and whatnot. But yeah, now nah, I'm. I think this next chapter is gonna be a lot of me collaborating with other people and kind of like bouncing ideas and whatnot. Absolutely. So with the Parlo Archives, what did you mm-hmm. want your fans to feel the most from this project? What was the what was the takeaway that you wanted them to leave with after listening to it, by the way? Um, I think I think um, I wanted this one to contrast my last project. I mean, a lot of people haven't heard that one, but it right. was it was a lot of down to earth shit on there. It was just like me talking about my life um, mm-hmm. and whatnot. So with this one, I wanted to. Um, I wanted to try escapism, you know? Mm. It's, it's like... Okay, okay. Basically a getaway for people. Like, yo, it's, it's a lot of shit going on over here. Um, there's songs where I'm touching up on certain topics that are more so conscious, but... Um, yeah, I just wanted this one to be, like, a fantasy, mm. basically. Okay. I like yeah. it a lot. And what's the biggest difference? Because, like you said, we haven't really heard... Your last project, you said it was 18 tracks. So what's the biggest difference for you between that project and this project? Like, what was the sound transition like, or if not any? Um, I think, let me see. It was, it was a lot of me weaving myself into beats in this project. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's what a lot of people would tell me. Like, I'll be, they'll be like, uh, how would you describe your music? I'll be like, yo, I really couldn't tell you. Uh, yeah. da, 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 da. And they'll be like, no, nah, it's like, when I hear you, I hear you that you're like sewing yourself onto the beat. So it's like right. me merging with the beat. Um, before all my other project, it would just be me like rapping over beats. But this one, I wanted to like, I wanted to like, I don't know. I wanted to. In a twine with it. Wanted, yeah, exactly. No, I but felt yeah, it, like it had a, a nice little groove. It was very groovy. Thank Definitely you. very groovy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. That's like, where you <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm start thing. saying that. <laughs> you with it because, like, that's what I'm saying. It gave me 70 vibes because you know, back in the 70s, they had like a whole different vibe. Everything was mellow, and mm-hmm. you know, like they, like you're saying, they were intertwined with themselves. So, like, that's how yes. it felt. So when I listened like, to Carlo Archives, I was like, yo, this is actually really, really groovy, and I love groovy tracks. So <laughs> it's, it's beyond like the beat and the bass, and you know, mm-hmm. it's it's a feeling, it's an emotion that you take away. Exactly. Sure. See, I, I've never gotten groovy yet. That's why I don't. That's why I really don't be like um, trying to over explain my projects or my music because it's like 
I, I love people's interpretation of it. Okay, that's a good answer. You want the good interpretation from everybody. You want them yes. to connect. I want it to. Love yes, them. exactly. A genuine interpretation. I love it. That's the best. I think that's the best answer I think any artist has ever given me when we're talking about their music because usually it's like, you're right. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's an over explanation. It's a trying to get people to see their viewpoint with, with with you and this this particular project. You want people to mm -hmm. take what they can from it and meet them exactly. on the level. I love that. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So this is my favorite part of the show. It's called Five Fast Five. Uh, you got to be quick with it. You got to five drinks. I'm a, so I feel like I'm on spot. Much about you. So you got to give us five juicy facts about yourself, right? And they got to be quick. So you're on the spot and you got to go like now. <laughs> um, uh, uh. <laughs> I get everybody. Uh, why, my, why my thing just cut off? Hold on. Okay. Good. Um, let me see. Let me see. Um, I'm Haitian. I'm Haitian American. I knew it. I yes. knew it. last name was because I'm Haitian. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm <laughs> I wanted to save that for the five fast facts. <laughs> Um, damn, let me see. Um, what we got for two? You gotta dig in this there. This is you hard. You're supposed to help me. You're supposed to be I like, can't help you with this out. one. We, this is your get to know, uh, Mr. Zazir interview. Um, from, uh, all right, all right. We can say it in the hate and I would, but <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, if there's any women watching, I wear a size 10 shoe. You know what I'm saying? Uh -oh. that's, that's a fun fact. Wait, not like that. I'm saying because girls be buying me stuff. So I want to buy me some shoes. You know what I'm saying size 10. Um, let me see. This is so hard. I don't never get these type of questions. Oh, that's why we're here. We're here to pick your brain. <laughs> oh what you got for God. three? Let me see. Um... I'm drawing blanks. What do you do when artists is drawing blanks at this point? Uh, let's see. Uh, has there in, been any weird situation that you've been in per se with a fan, whether it's um, awkward or saucy or whatever? Hmm. You're thinking. I feel like you got one. I'm, I'm terrible off top. Like, I can't even freestyle either, so... <laughs> that's a good yeah, fact. Is, that, that's number three. Can't, hey, can't freestyle. Can't freestyle yet. That, I'm going to get that it. Um, I was for four. Let me see. <laughs> this is hard. This is too hard. Um, <laughs> you can throw out a favorite food of color at this point. Okay. Um, my favorite food is probably Thai basil. Thai really? basil fried rice. Yes. Stop it, that. that's my favorite go-to for Thai food. You want to be me so Spice. bad. <laughs> you want to be, like... <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, I promise you. That's what I'm going to get when I get Thai food. I swear, we're no, chicken. <laughs> chicken, yes, exactly. Like, uh, let it's me the think. Haitian connection. What right I got? Now. Yeah, ICN, <laughs> ICN connection. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, let me see. Um... <laughs> One more fact. One more fact. It's one, right? One more. You got one more. Uh, I hear the uh, Jeopardy, Jeopardy noise playing in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. All right. I drive a, a Lamborghini Aventador from. Uh, now nah, I'm playing. I'm playing. I was like, damn, check you out. <laughs> nah, I drive. I drive a Camry right now. You said what? I drive. I drive a Camry right now. I'm, I'm That's all right. It's better than what right I drive. <laughs> What you what you in? A Hyundai. <laughs> Hyundai is hard though. <laughs> Hyundai. Uh, Lancia or something like that. Yep. <laughs> it's the oh. Haitian connection, man. It's the Haitian exactly. connection. Exactly. You nah, already nah, know I'm where we at. I'm <laughs> All right. What's the thing? Then it all the facts. Exactly. Thank you got him. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today and taking the time out your busy schedule. I'm Julie Vamps. This is Weston Desir. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. <laughs> thank you, man.